So I labelled this shoe the best daily trainer of 2023 so far a few months ago. Now, after 311 miles, nearing the end of its life, am I still standing by that statement or have I changed my mind? So if you come here to find out how this shoe is holding up after 311 miles, fantastic, you're in the right place. We're going to be going through everything, including the wear and tear, how I've been using it and how I've got it to this point in terms of the mileage. But what I also want to do at the end of the video is talk a little bit about why I gave it the label of the daily trainer of the year so far, give you my thoughts on whether I still feel that way and then talk a little bit more about how much life I think this shoe has left. So if you're excited for today's video guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, we'll dive in to the wear and tear. So I kind of feel like this shoe is very much the same as the Hyperion Tempo in the fact that if anything's going to give out first, it's going to be the midsole. In terms of wear and tear on the shoe in terms of the upper, it's absolutely fantastic. Holding up fine and after 311 miles, bar the fact that it's a little bit dirty, it's doing really well. No snags, no frays, no tears. The only weak spot, I'll show you down the laces there, all looks good. The only weak spot in the shoe is the heel. I don't think the camera's going to pick it up, but the material at the back here is very much thinning out. I expect to see a hole in the next 50 to 100 miles but to be honest with you I kind of feel like the midsole might go before that anyway we'll talk about that uh, shortly in terms of the midsole though midsole though itself I found with the Hyperion Tempo that the midsole really kind of started to give out on me around this time and I would squeeze out a few more miles I had a couple of pairs of the shoe um, but around 350 miles was the most I got to the second pair to. The first pair was around 320-ish. When I'm pleased to report so far, it's holding out. I don't quite feel like it's there yet. And when I say there, what happened with the tempo was it went completely flat, completely dead. It was like when you were running, it would like shake through your teeth. It went ridiculously firm and it lost all responsiveness whatsoever. And although it's not as lively and poppy as it used to be, we're certainly not at that stage yet. In terms of the outsole wear, little Little bit on the toe off area there other than that that's probably where i've been doing a lot of drills and strides um the mid the outsole rubber is holding up really really well so in terms of overall performance of the shoe in terms of wear and tear it's doing really well so how have i been using it well i've put in another 80 so miles since you've last seen an update and this will be the last update by the way i'll explain a bit more about that again uh, at the end but how have i been using it since then well to give you a bit of history with the shoe this was something that i used all through the marathon training block loads of long run workouts loads of steady runs and loads of workouts themselves and I never really touched uh, easy paces in this shoe. I did a couple of easy runs and it felt great but I kind of reserved the easier let's say recovery day shoes more for those easy paces. So it never really got a look in uh, in that aspect and that was very similar up until the 233 mile update that I gave you uh, not so long ago but since then I really have started to use it for everything, anything and everything. I've just I've fallen in love with the shoe so much that I just want to wear it on every single run and I've done plenty of easy runs in this shoe since that point as well as I haven't really done any long runs because I've finished marathon training and I'm building back up but steady runs easy runs it's had it all and I've really enjoyed gravitating towards this thing for easy runs as well now which is strange because I've got better shoes for that purpose, but then have I? I love running in this shoe. This thing keeps my heart rate quite low. So in terms of other shoes, I can run at the same pace, but I'm a lot more efficient in this shoe. And the cushioning and the comfort's still there. So it's delivering everything I need it to, which is why I labeled it the best daily training of 2023. Not that I had that knowledge back then, but I do now, which kind of almost cements that crown um, for me that this is an absolute gem of a shoe. So in terms of usage, it, it's literally covered everything and in particular now more so, just any run and every run I'm going to this shoe. So will I continue to use the shoe moving forwards? Yes, I'm going to give you kind of an estimated prediction as to when I think it's going to kind of go, <laughs> shall we say, I think the midsole is going to go. I don't think it's, I think it's going to get to like 400 miles a maximum. I kind of feel like we're nearly there, but it's not quite there yet. So obviously foams, they do deteriorate over time. And I'm on the heavier side of runners. There's a lot of you guys out there that are what I would class as a traditional runner size and shape, a lot smaller than me uh, and a lot lighter than me. For me, I'm just for context, six foot six. So I'm very tall and I do, I do weigh roughly around 86 to 88 kilos. There's a lot of force that goes through these shoes uh, per step compared to a lot of you guys out there. So I'm really impressed that it's done uh, as well as it has. I kind of feel like it's going to do better than the tempo. I felt with both pairs of tempos that at this stage in its lifespan, 
it was pretty much done and dusted and what I did for the last few runs was take them out onto the trails where the ground was a bit softer to kind of mitigate the the hard solid midsole that was left uh, in the tempos but I'm just not there yet with this shoe I feel it's coming like I definitely feel like it's deadening off a little bit but it's not at a point where I feel it's unrunnable and I do certainly feel I can get at least another 50 miles out of it at least um, and I'm quite hopeful to be honest with you I can get 400 and if I can get 400 miles out of this shoe and it's taken me through a whole marathon training block, it's been the best shoe by a country mile, um, then I'm going to be honest with you, this is an absolute win and a victory because <laughs> that was my main gripe with the tempo. It just didn't have the durability. And I know for a lot of you, you'll be saying 300 to 400 miles is not that big a difference. Well, for me, if I can get 400 miles out of a shoe in this day and age, back in the day, I'd look to get six, 700 miles. If I can get 400, that's incredible. Um, I just feel like everything in this world now is made a heck of a lot more disposable uh, just to kind of reel you in and buy the next thing. Well, 400 is satisfactory for me and if I can get that in this shoe, I will be absolutely delighted. So going back to that question that I asked in the intro, is this the best daily trainer of 2023 so far? Absolutely, yes. It has lit up my joy for running in shoes. Like there's not been another shoe in my rotation so far that has, I'm gonna be honest with you, come close to the feeling I get when I run in this shoe. It's done everything and it's done it well. Now, I've had this debate on previous videos about daily trainers. A lot of people will look at me and say, that's not a daily trainer. It's definitely meant for more up-tempo, faster work. I get it, I understand. For me, a daily trainer, the definition of a daily trainer is changing over the years and effectively a daily trainer is something you can do everything in. You can do every single type of run. And especially now that I'm gravitating towards this thing for easy runs as well, I literally am covering the whole spectrum in this shoe. I will do easy runs, steady runs, workouts, um, tempo runs, long run workouts, just there's nothing I wouldn't choose this shoe for. And so that effectively cements the case of it is a daily trainer. It's something that I can pick up daily and use. It's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, and yeah, there's no question in my mind that so far out of all the shoes that I've tried, this is the best daily trainer of 2023. Now I've had some resounding agreements with me on my previous videos on this shoe. And I do understand that so many of you out there love it and you're getting on with it really, really well. But I also know that it's not for everybody. It is on the firmer side. The midsole is a little bit less forgiving than some of the other shoes out there. And so if you're looking for a shoe to do it all like this, I feel uh, that matches up, but is on the other end of the spectrum with a nicer midsole, then I would consider the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Again, I've mentioned that before. A shoe that I feel like I can do everything in. The, the, the Speed 3 is a shoe that I've run easy in moderate, steady workouts, long runs, everything. It does the whole shebang. And I feel like they, the, those two shoes, the Hyperion Max and the Speed 3, are great for exactly the same stuff. They're just opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of the midsole feel. So if you're looking at something like this, but don't want to risk gambling on something a little bit firmer, then do consider the Endorphin Speed 3. I'd say the Speed 2 and 1, a lot of people say, I can get it on discount, is it worth it? Yes, but what you'll find with those is they're certainly more geared for speed. They're not more of a daily trainer. The adaptions that they've made to Speed 3 and the adjustments have meant that it's kind of toned down a little bit and not quite as edgy as the 1 and 2, um, but certainly can cover more basic. So I do feel like in terms of comparisons, the Speed 3 is something to go for if you're looking for something that's not quite as firm as this. So this will be the last update I provide on this shoe. The next update you'll see will be a community post. I feel like I need to use that feature a little bit more so I can deliver information that way. Rather than me continually making videos at every 100 mile update, I kind of feel like I've done enough of this shoe now. Uh, I've, I've shared enough information. You guys know how I feel about it. You know how I've used it. So this will be the end. In terms of the finish date, I will post the final mileage uh, in a few weeks time whenever I feel like it gives up the ghost I'll post a photo and I'll give you some stats of where we got to uh, with the shoe but as always I'd love to hear how you guys are getting on with the Brooks Hyperion Max and if you found a good competitor to this shoe other than the Endorphin Speed I'd love to hear that too the float ride from Reebok has been mentioned as a very similar style trainer uh, do it all I know that's another good one I can't test that sadly it's not in my size but I'd love to hear from you any others out there that you can recommend for anyone else watching that's it from me today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for weekly running content I'll see you in the next one until then